Okay, so in this video, we're going to prove some of the properties of the Wishart distribution. So remember, if we've got x1 to xn that are normally distributed, multivariate normally distributed, dimension p, mean vector mu, covariance matrix sigma, then m, which is the sum of xi transposed, uh, sorry, it's the sum of xi, xi transposed from i equals 1 to n, then this has a Wishart distribution, dimension p, scale matrix sigma with n degrees of freedom. So let's have some properties. So first of all, let's suppose that a is a q by p constant matrix. Then if we consider a m a transpose, if you think about it, this is going to be a q by q matrix. Now this also has a Wishart distribution. The dimension is going to be Q, obviously, it's a Q by Q matrix. And all that happens here is that we scale the uh, scale matrix sigma and it becomes A sigma A transposed. And it's still got n degrees of freedom. So let's just think about this briefly. Well, if we consider A M a transposed. This is A, the sum of xi, xi transposed, A transposed. Well, if we take the sum out here, this is the sum from i equals 1 to n of A xi times A xi transposed. Now, the A X i's, well, the X i's had a normal distribution, mean mu variant sigma. So the A X i's are going to be normal, dimension Q, mean zero, and variance matrix A sigma A transposed. And so from the definition of uh, the wish art, we can see that when we um, multiply these vectors, so if this is vector yi, we've got yi, yi transposed, this instantly follows that this is going to be Wishart dimension q, variance matrix A sigma A transposed with n degrees of freedom. Okay. The next property we're going to think about is now let's suppose that A is a vector of length p, okay, so and it's constant. Then, if we now consider A transposed M A, what's this distribution? So, similar to before, we can write this as A transposed Xi times A transposed Xi. So, I'm from I equals 1 to N. Now, A transposed xi, this is just normal, with, um, univariate normal, with mean 0, and variance given by a transposed sigma a. Now let's, let's consider random variables zi that are normal, not 1. Okay. If we let um, sigma squared be a transposed sigma a then sigma times zi is normal not a transposed sigma a so a transposed m a has the same distribution as the sum of sigma zi, all squared. Well, this here is sigma squared, the sum of zi squared, and zi's are normal not one variable, random variables. So this is sigma squared times a chi squared n random variable. Okay, so another property is that a transposed ma has a chi-squared 
distribution with n degrees of freedom scaled by a transposed sigma a. Okay. This is a second property. So one final property we'll need before getting to our major theorem we want to prove, and that is if M1 is Wishart dimension P covariance matrix sigma with N1 degrees freedom, and M2 is also Wishart with dimension P and scale matrix sigma but with N2 degrees freedom, then and they're independent of each other, then M1 plus M2. Well, that you will not be surprised to find is Wishart with scale matrix sigma dimension p and n1 plus n2 degrees of freedom. And that's easy to see because we can write m1 as the sum from i equals 1 up to n1 of xi, xi transposed where the xi are normal zero sigma, I mentioned p when variables, m2 we could write as the sum from i equals n1 plus 1 up to n1 plus n2, so i.e. n2 separate variables of xi, xi transposed. So m1 plus m2 is just the sum from i equals 1 up to n1 plus n2 of xi, xi transposed. And thus it does indeed have the distribution claimed. Okay, so we're now ready to try and prove the main result we're interested in with the Wishart distribution, namely the sampling distribution of the sample covariance matrices. So to do that, just note that if x is a matrix, so it's an n by p matrix, where we've got x um, 1 transposed down to x n transposed as our columns, mm -hmm. and the xi's are all normal, multivariate normal random vectors, length p, mean vector mu, covariance matrix sigma, then x transposed x is the sum of xi, xi transposed, so that has a Wishart distribution. P dimensions, scale matrix sigma, n degrees of freedom. So the theorem we rely upon to prove the distribution of this sample covariance matrix is called Cochrane's theorem. So Cochrane's theorem says that if P, which is in the n by n matrix, so if P is a projection matrix, so remember that means that P squared equals P, and if it has rank R, then the product x transposed x, which is our, our Wishart random variable, it says that x transposed x could be written as x transposed px plus x transposed the n by n identity matrix i minus p times x. So that's one identity. So we can write x transposed x in that form where x transposed px has a Wishart distribution, dimension p of course, scale matrix sigma with r degrees of freedom and x transposed i n minus p x. It's also Wishart dimension p scale matrix sigma but with n minus r degrees of freedom. Okay, so have a look what we did here. We started with x transpose x, which is Wishart with n degrees of freedom, and we split it up into two terms. 
x transpose px and x transpose i minus px. The first term has r degrees of freedom, the second term is n minus r degrees degrees of freedom, so when we add them up, we get n degrees of freedom. Okay, so we'll come back and think about the proof of Cochrane's theorem in a minute, but let's go and first prove the result we want about the sampling distribution of covariance matrices. So we're going to want to prove this proposition given Cochrane's theorem. So how do we do that? Well, let's let P be the centering matrix H. Okay, so that's the identity matrix minus 1 over n, a vector of 1s times a vector of 1s transposed. So this is the n by n centering matrix. And we know that h squared equals h, so h is a projection matrix, from what we've seen previously. So if we want, to, we want to think about the rank of h, well, the identity minus p, that is just this vector of 1s, so, so 1 over n times this vector of 1s, times this vector of 1s transposed, and this clearly is rank 1. The rank 1 matrix. So we must have that P is rank n minus 1. So now let's apply Cochrane's theorem. So by Cochrane's theorem, x transposed h x must have a Wishart distribution, p dimension scale matrix, sigma, and n minus 1 degrees of freedom. So, and that's it. Okay. We know that the sample covariance matrix S is 1 over n x transposed hx. So we've got the result n s here is Wishart p sigma n minus one. Okay, and we're done. So this result we're going to use in our hypothesis tests. It tells us the distribution of the empirical or the sample covariance matrix.